Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and today I want to show you how to layer your dye-based inks from My Favorite Things, or any of your dye-based inks, to create um, a really beautiful background that you can use on your next card. This is really easy to do, and um, I have seen Laura Basson do this technique, and she's really great at it, so um, I suggest going and checking out some of her tutorials to see how just how easy and beautiful this is. So what I have done is I have chosen some ink colors here. Um, colors that I think are the same intensity and brightness and will work very well together. If you're interested in the colors of these, remember down below the video I have a supply list and the names of everything that I use so you can go and check those out. The other thing I have here is this mini ink blending tool and this is from Ranger. I love these. What this has is this has a little um, foam applicator um, on the end and what you can do is you can change these out when you need to change colors of inks. Um, I today have one for each color ink but as you need to go you can just go ahead and switch those out easily. I'm just going to start with a sheet of white cardstock here and um, a sheet of scratch paper and you're going to see why this is invaluable to have. Um, this is just a sheet of printer paper when I print something off and then I'm done with it. I just save that and use that again. Um, I'm going to start at the top with my um, Razzleberry ink here and I'm just going to start here and work my way across the card stock. I'm going to put my foam applicator into the ink and push a little and then I want to go to the scratch paper to kind of get an idea of how much ink I have on here. And then what I'm going to do is slowly ink onto the card or the card stock. I'm just going to ink. And you can ink this until you get the amount of color and the intensity of color that you want. And that's what's great about these dye-based inks here is that you can keep layering and layering for more color. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move on to the orange. And this is Orange Fizz. And grab another handle. Stick it in. Kind of see how much I got going on there. I got quite a bit of ink. And I'm going to start off and on to the side. The reason I'm starting off and on is because I want to have a little bit more control of where my ink's going to go and if I start too deep in the middle of a spot I might get a spot that I can't fix. Okay so there I like the amount of orange but as you can see I don't have a good transition between the two. So that's where you're going to go back and you're going to play around a little bit and work on overlapping these inks and blending them together to make an easy transition. And these translucent inks just make this very easy to do. So you can see I've kind of got, that's oh, okay. I may want to go a little darker here. Blend this out a little bit more. And it's just a little bit of putzing and playing. And then also a lot of personal preference too. All right, let's move into the yellow. And this is daffodil. Same thing again, just gonna kinda, there's not much ink on that, so there we go. And I'm kinda cheating, sometimes I'm not starting off to the side, but I have been inking with these a little bit already today, so I have a pretty good idea of um, how much ink I already have on the foam because I've already been making backgrounds today. So that kinda gives me an idea. And I'm going a little bit farther over here with color because it'll make it easier to blend when I go in with my green ink which will come up next. Again I have that line there. I'm going to go back grab my orange ink and here's where I want to make sure I ink off. I hope you guys can see this. I always stick my head over my projects and then you guys can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Blend that a little bit better. I'm just continuing to putter along and keep blending. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna move on to the green, and this is green room. I love the grass kind of green of this color here. Now this green and yellow transition is a little bit tougher. So this will require a little bit more playing Okay, and I'm going to watch because if I get too far in here, I'm going to get too much green where I don't want it. And you can see I keep turning my cardstock at an angle. I just find that it helps me blend. So feel free to move your paper and cardstock around as you need to to make that work. 
All right. I'm really going to cheat and go far ahead here. I'm going to do the blue. This last little bit of blue on here. I think that's the other great thing about this is every time you do this, you're going to get a little bit different of a look because you're going to use a little bit more color in one spot than you are in another. And I think that just adds to the uniqueness of every one of these backgrounds that you make. All right, go back to the green. This is a good arm workout, let me tell you. You can see I like to use a circular motion Work back and forth. I think this is just kind of fun. And you can make backgrounds all day by continuing to ink and blend and ink and blend. Try to get some of my circles out of here. You'll also be able to tell when you need to start re-inking because you're not going to get as much of a solid coverage as you normally would. All right, well that's enough puttering with this for now. But you get the idea of how you're going to just continue to work and blend these colors together in. And that's the great part about these inks is they're translucent and they let you do that. Once you get this done, now you have a background that you can use. You can use this as is and um, use it for a whole card background. Or you can do like what I did here. I just took a die and cut out a chunk of it to use. Um, you could also use um, a circle. You could have just used the butterfly. But have fun making a bunch of these backgrounds to create a bunch of possibilities for your next card. Have fun layering inks.